Scotty. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, we are beginning today's session. Yes? My name is uh, Juan Gabriel Antonio Rodan, and I tell you just a little bit about the place where I teach. Okay? Um, I teach English, of course. Yes? But my school is a French bilingual school. It's one of the few French bilingual schools in the city and in the province. <coughs> and we have a large school with five feeding primary schools. Only one of those five primary schools is a French bilingual school. So what does it mean? that about 15 or 20% of the new students in Primero de Eso have done any, you know, bilingual classes in French. So what happens? That our students are much better in English, which is the second language, than in French. Okay? So when we get the students in Primero de Eso, we can do a lot of things but in French, they are just, for most of them, they're just absolute beginners. Yes? So when they get to the level of the fourth of SO, they, you know, they almost get to be balanced. But not before that. So for us, in English, it's easy to do things which they are not, which are not so easy to do in French. Alright? Now, <coughs> you know, uh, switching from a little bit of talking from me, a little bit of theory, and a little bit more of work from you. Okay, so I'm going to give you first uh, one sheet with two prime, what is it, guided principles for material design. Okay, so every time we stop to do something, uh, we are going to infer <coughs> one of those principles. Okay, so I'll give you a blank for you, so that you can take note, yes?
Okay, okay, let's say the real stuff. Okay, you know, whatever you are in the <laughs> sentence or in the paragraph, don't worry. Okay? So you've been able to write a few words. 10, 20, 15, two, three lines, right? Yes? Now, can you swap your paper or notebooks to the person sitting next to you or your back or somebody else? A different person. A different person. <laughs> Okay, yes, don't worry, we can stop now, if this is just uh, to give you an idea, okay? So everybody has been able to, you know, continue writing at least for one, two sentences, a few words, okay? It makes sense, <coughs> what you read, what you have read, and what you have written, yes? Okay, good. So first principle, first principle. What have you been doing? Understanding, Understanding. Understanding. Okay. and producing. You have understood a <laughs> message and you have produced another message. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that communication? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> a kind of communication. Yeah. Written communication. Mm -hmm. Yes? Have you interacted? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we right. You haven't got any feedback yet? Okay. Yeah? Good. Good. Okay, if, 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 now if you if we can have feedback if we keep on, you know, writing and throwing the paper goes back to the same person. Okay. But we had interaction, yes, and we had an opportunity to produce. Yes? Good. Now Okay, we have the first two principles. Okay? Materials. Any material. The first three lines that you found is a material. Isn't it? It's a piece of language that you have found that you were that you could read. Yes? So any material provides you an opportunity for interaction, for using the language. And it was simple. It was three lines from your classmate. <coughs> okay? And when we interact, we can do it with another person, but also we can do it with a text. 
Okay, when you read a message and you react to interact with the text. Okay, so when we talk about interaction, we always have in mind two people just talking face to face or on the phone or wherever. But when you come across a text, if you're interacting with the text, you decode a message and produce a new one. Okay, so whatever piece of material you find, whichever text you find, you, you already have something to communicate, to produce language. Okay, good. So, when I wrote this 
invented language, it was where did your friends go? Mm -hmm. <coughs> My friends went to the shady forest. Yes? I mean, of course, uh, that was only in my mind. But, but look, look all the, all the ideas that you have come up with. Okay, you said there is interaction, correct? There is a question, okay? There is a statement, yes? It may be negative, why not? Okay? You said there are, these words are verbs. Uh, you said, well, this can be like did or have or do or whatever. Okay, so it was completely new for you, but you were able to make meaning out of the knowledge you already had. <coughs> yes? So you were actually learning this invented language. You were using your previous knowledge to build something else. Yes? are very, very important. One of them is the fabric which the materials are aimed to the fabric. Yeah, um, the content. The content. The content. You find content where? It's a short word beginning with a vowel. I'm giving you some help. It's a two-syllable word beginning with a vowel. And, and the first vowel is an I. Input. Very good, lady. Input. Okay. Input. Okay. So, by means, by means of language, by means of pictures, we were providing input. Input. Yes? What gets to your brain? Through your ears, through your eyes, or through your hands. Input. Yes? So this is the most important. If there is no input, there is no material. When you wrote those two, three first lines, that was input for the reader. Yes? Good. So one thing is input. What is the other important thing? Okay, what what you do? 
your production up to, up to all the tasks because you don't always produce. Sometimes you read and tick or make a circle or if you're doing physical response, you react. Yeah, but you don't produce. So, two important elements, input and task. If there is no input and no task, there is no teaching material. There's something else. Okay? Sometimes um, people say they double T, text and task. <coughs> or input and task, whatever. Right? Good. So, easy question. So, what is input? What is input? Yes? Whatever gets to our minds in the shape of language and or images. The photograph from the bridge in Cuenca, the picture from the slide in the forward point, whatever, in the language. Okay? When, when we talk, uh, when we talk, when people talk about learning a language, they do. Have you ever seen this pentagon ever with these five corners? If one of them is missing, learning is not taking place. So materials, I mean inputs and tasks, they are so important. When we say learning, <coughs> and of course you need two people, a guy, a teacher, you no know, student, or a learner. Learner is better than a student in the work. The language, of course, is a third element. And you learn because you do something. And in order to do something, you need materials. And then, of course, there is motivation. Whatever it is, a motivation. To learn a language because you're an immigrant, or simply to get a finco para probar parto de eso. No problem. <laughs> yes, but there is a motivation. So whatever it is, the motivation, but there is always one motivation. If there isn't any, you don't learn. Alright? You do things because you want to do them for some purpose. Right? And of course, probably somebody else has said this before during the course, and I just go, and somebody else is going to interpret it. Okay? So there is linguistic and non-linguistic input. You know. Yes? Good. So, learners, read, look at, because you were, look, were looking at images, they listen to, they watch, or sometimes they do two things at the same time, they read and listen, or they listen and watch, or they read and watch, yes? So you get people in different forms. So what is important about input? That it can be it can be in different oh by the way. Right. What is this? Mobile phone, good. Can you teach how to use mobile phone? Hmm? What else? It's a mobile phone. And it, 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 it doesn't look very nice because it's a big part of it. Okay. It's old fashioned, very good, yes. <laughs> it's old fashioned, good. It's very useful. It is flat.
you know, it's just mineral, they get in Africa, it's cotton, you know, cotton. So the sprint, the sprint, well, we, the first intention is to say it's a glass, yes, because we can see through, yes, it's cotton. You know, cotton is mineral that, you know, it's, um, <coughs> it's, it's all cotton? No, what else? There is, plastic. there is some plastic, there is um, some metal pieces. What about inside? Microchips. Microchips. Microchips, yes. Programs. Apps. Software. Circuits. Battery. Battery, energy, battery. Okay, good. Good. Okay. So you so you can listen. See? Listen. Text, you can text messages, you can type. Okay. So what happened? So we have been now five minutes with a mobile phone. And I mean in most of school they are not allowed. Okay? So we've been teaching with a mobile phone. So input can be written, can be oral, and can be hands-on input, an object. You can teach a lot from an object. And I understand for the subject teachers and also for the language teachers, but teaching from an object uh, makes things very e easier for students because they feel familiar with, they have you know, some visual support, okay? Imagine. Right? Imagine that you are teaching, for example, erosion, okay? And then you have your beautiful lesson and you say, well, at the peak of the mountain, rocks have this shape, and because of the wind, because of the rain, a piece of the rock falls down and it goes down to the valley and after thousands of years the stone becomes a pebble. And from the river at the end it gets to the seashore and then this pebble gets even flatter. Okay? If you explain erosion that way, you know, students have to figure out everything you are talking to. Everything you were saying, yes, but if you bring some examples of those rocks, pebble, and flat stone from the seashore, it's much easier. All right. So, another principle, yes. Well, we said that before. Yes? So, number four, number five. In material, we said input and task. And the new principle is that input should be multimodal. I mean, it doesn't have to be in a single format. It can have different formats at the same time. Yes? And this is good because it facilitates comprehension but also because our brains are different multiple intelligences yes and because there is diversity people who learn from visual inputs from the hands on and people who learn from text yes Somebody else 
has told you about it before me, and somebody else is going to do it after me. So I skip this set of um, slides. Okay? Now, and now here we are you familiar with some of those words or initial? First, beginning on the left, bigs and how? Bigs. Yes, there's a language, there's a language used for basic. It is actually basic uh, in the personal communication skills. The language that we learn to communicate. What we do in the foreign language classes for all our life. <coughs> okay? When the students are in cuarto de primaria, they say, Hello, my name is Manolo. I live in Almodovar and I am seven years old. When the student is in 12, says, Hello, my name is Manolo. I live in Almodovar. I am 12 years old and I am a student. Okay, when the student is in the fourth semester, says, Hello, my name is Manolo. I live in Almodovar. I am 16 years old and I like family. Yes, this is big, basic interpersonal <coughs> communication skill. What is CAL? It's the language that we use for the subject, uh, for the content subject. Yes? The language that we use to speak about science, technology, math, geography, whatever. The discourse, the language, is completely different. Yes? <coughs> The language, the grammar, the vocabulary, the structures, the type of interaction, yes, the complexity of sentences, everything is different. One is what we use to communicate, okay, with another speaker, and the, another, a diff completely different thing is what we do to learn the content of the subject. Alright? <coughs> Multimodal, what we have seen just a minute ago, okay? Input in different formats or input in a single format. Okay? And lots and hot. Lots are this low low order thinking skills and hot higher order thinking skills. Right? So when we arrange, when we uh, design the materials or when we modify uh, those elements, you know top, bottom, bottom, top, whatever, uh, you know, those are engaged. Now, <coughs> let's use uh, the example, let's use the example of erosion. All right? This is a typical, this is a classical quadrant, okay, from Cummings. And I tell you, you see, and um, the ones at the top, quadrant one and two, we need little thinking. I mean, the activities that the students have to do are very simple. They have to tick, they have to underline, they have to match, they have to produce a few words only. It doesn't require much thinking. The activities at the bottom, quadrant three and four, require a lot of thinking. Okay, they have to analyze, they have to comment, they have to criticize, they have to produce a text, right? That requires a lot more thinking. Now, on the left, one and three, uh, those activities have a lot of known written supports. Pictures, objects, photographs, videos, whatever. Quadrant 4, 2 and 4 have very little support. Alright? And finally, 1 and 2 have to do with basic language and 3 and 4 have to do with academic language. Much more complex language. So, just a little challenge. Could you think could you think of one activity to, to teach your students about erosion for one of those quadrants? So you have to think about 
four different activities, okay? But think about the three surnames, input, uh, thinking skills, and language. It's, a, it's hard work, but try to figure out four different ways, four different ways to, approach, to approach erosion. Okay. It doesn't have to be uh, for secondary education, I mean in general, yes? Maybe the first exercise and for activity in quadrant one, it's very basic, it's for primary students. It doesn't have to be for secondary students. It can be very, very basic. Okay, it says input supported by very, by many visual cues. Yes? Primary education books. And day to day language. To, to make you think about it. Okay, so for example, a DVD quadrant one, you were very close to it. Okay, it was not a mountain, but it's a DVD with plenty of pictures, yes? Telling the story of how a rock becomes a pebble. Think about uh, five, six, seven years old students or your own children. Hello, my name is Tony. I live up here in the mountain. Next page. Hello, I am Stony. Now I live here in the valley of the river. Next page. Hello, I am Stony. I am getting close to the sea. Infant education, primary education, is that, isn't it? Okay? For the second one. Okay? Uh, it's a radio program. The students can't see anything. anything. They just simply hear words. Okay, so there is not so much visual support. The story is a basic story for children, but then there are no pictures. Next one, number three, very close to what you said, okay? Um, in this case, it was a nature documentary. 
no subtitles, so that's hard for the students. And number four, of course, a scientific article, you know, that there is no way to understand even for native speakers. If you read a text on geology, if you are not a geologist, oh my god. Yes? Good. All right. So uh, you are some of you are language teachers, and some of you are content teachers, right? Okay. <coughs> Can you think, uh, for example, language teachers and content teachers in different sites? What are the five or six more classical, typical activities that you do in your classes? You should make a list, okay? I don't know if they are going to be similar or different from language and content teachers, but think about the five or six um, most common activities you do in your classes. Don't worry if they are good or bad, I just want to know the most common. And of course they will be good. For example, so what would you say are, are the five or six more common activities you do? For example, content teachers? Explanation. <laughs> you provide yourself, students, with an explanation of technology, biology, whatever is your subject. Okay. You agree? The rest of you agree with that? Let's say that. To provide an explanation, to provide, you know, an uh, important amount of new content. Okay, what is one of them? More. Reading and listening. Reading and listening. Okay. All right. More. Yes. Well, we uh, provide them with the uh, resources, right? You know, video, whatever, and I make a list of questions about the uh, about an instrument. They have to search for them and make a. Can I run a presentation in the format they, they want and they have to present to the... Okay, so what you do is like a guided reading. Yes? No, they, they work cooperatively. I just give them the resources that they work on their own. Thing. Okay, so you, you would say kind of project. Yes? Or cooperative work. Yes? Good. Good. More. Labeling. 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 Okay. Labeling. So that's a work on vocabulary. Right? Okay. More? Jigsaw reading and jigsaw listening. Jigsaw reading and jigsaw listening. Okay, you're doing comprehension in different ways. Yeah. Yes? Because it's funnier than doing Yeah. Good. Any more content features? Conversations. 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 Oh. 
Okay. Okay. Good. What about the language teachers? What about the language teachers? What about the language teachers? Okay, so you are doing oral or written production. Good. Okay. More common activities for language teachers? Sorry? Drama Okay, so we're going to practice have just gone. Have just. Yes, good. Drama Picture descriptions. Picture descriptions. Alright, good. Which video and then finally write. So, no, 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 no. Talk about it. sorry. Good. So watch, talk, and write. Good. Role plays. Role plays. Role plays. Quizzes. Quizzes. Very good. Very good. Gap filling. Gap filling. Good. <coughs> Why do I ask you? This question. I don't want to check what is your teaching style. No. Everyone has a teaching style, and if he feels or she feels comfortable, that's okay. And if the students learn, of course. Yes? Now, why I'm asking you this question? Because learning is a process with three stages. Yes? What are the three stages? Understanding, thinking, thinking producing. and producing. Okay, there is input, there is intake, and there is output. You are exposed to the language. Your brain tries to assimilate the language to build on the former content that they already have in their brain and finally your brain tries you know pushes your mouth or your hand to produce message you know that there is a very big gap a very big difference between what gets to your brain and what between what and what comes out for example if your input is 100%, we lose a lot of that 100%. And when we produce, we produce 10, 15%. Everything else, the rest, you know, uh, it gets, you know, lose somewhere in your brain in the way. Okay? So, what happens? I was asking you what type of activities do you <coughs> most frequently do? Because different activities belong to different learning stages. Okay? So you said, for example, jigsaw reading or jigsaw listening. That is input. Grammar drills. That is intake. Because your brain is processing information. Okay? Uh, watching a video, talking and producing. Okay, there is input and there is output. And a little bit of intake because it's almost immediate response. Okay, if you are doing uh, filling the gaps, because intake, your brain is working on something that is already there. Yes? So, why is this important? Because we have to provide opportunities to complete the whole cycle. If we concentrate, probably we do it and we are unaware of it, but if we concentrate simply on, on comprehension, you know, what happens? You know, there is a lack of production. You remember when we went, I, I remember when I went to my primary school long ago, I never produced anything apart, apart from the sentences in the exams. Yes? Or filling the, the sentences in the word. Okay, there was a lot of input of you know of exposition to the language. So 
Uh, work on the language is important. Yes, it is, because it is a simulation. Work on vocabulary is important. Yes, it is. But it's also important inputs and outputs. So we have to, when, when we design our teaching unit or when we design our classes, try to provide opportunities for everything to happen. If we concentrate only on a single stage, something is not going, going very well. Yes? Um, right? So, learning, learning is a cycle. Okay? And when the cycle gets to the end, goes back to the beginning again. You remember you produce three lines at the beginning of today's session. So you were at the end of the process, but for your maze, it was just the beginning. Yeah, I can make it. Yeah. I didn't want to show you the other principles. All right. cycle and so that we have said what is learning and now the question is how to learn or how to teach how to two models yes have you ever seen this picture or at least a picture on the left I like it I love it there's a banking model okay the teacher is in the possession of knowledge of content you know opens your head and fills your head up with content it's the same as when you go to the petrol station, you get your car, fill up the tank with a new petrol, yes? And then the car can move on for another 600 kilometers. Alright? This is the banking model. There is no interaction, the teacher doesn't care just about, you know, providing the student with all the knowledge that he has or that he has available. Yes? What is the other strategy? the building model. When you go to a building site, what is the most important element around the new building that is being erected? Scaffolding. Yeah. Correct. Okay? We we build or builders, you know, use these metal platforms and this whatever they use the bars and so on and they and they build scaffolds. Okay, so I'm not going to stop again so much on this because my colleagues will be talking about that too. Okay, but the scaffolding, scaffolding is, you know, one of the key elements for learning. Have we done any scaffolding today? You remember the pictures in the language, in the strange language? I was just doing some scaffolding for you. I was providing you with some help so that understanding was easier for you. That's scaffolding. Okay? We can provide help very quickly. We can provide help with the language. Okay? We can use shorter sentences. Uh, of course, shorter paragraphs. <coughs> Try to avoid many pronouns because they, you know, it's more difficult for students. Uh, underline words, ideas, 
do a vocabulary brainstorming before you start doing something else. Okay, so you can do different techniques to make the understanding of language easier. Yes? This is something that language teacher we have done all our lives. Yes? When you go to class for the first year, you will say, well, I have to do something for these students to learn. And most of the techniques are these ones. Okay? But also, you can do something else, okay, to, uh, to help learners learn the content. Okay? Using organizers, using colors, giving subtitles, providing pictures, videos, documentaries, whatever. That is providing help to make the learning of the content much easier. Right? But I don't want, I don't want to, to stop, you know, more on this. Okay, so our, our next principle is one, yes? Scaffolding is the step to understand. Copy and paste from the wiki. 
Then produce a poster. This is important in this case. You have to produce a poster on the river that they are assigned. Or you are assigned in this case. You're okay, you research coming on the internet, blah blah blah. One, you have to produce a description of the river, a picture. You are not doing the picture now. Other additional pictures or information. And of course, uh, you know, give a reference of the website where you found the information. Okay? And I gave them, as you see, an example of the description, what they could write. Okay? The example was on the Guadalquivir. Okay? So it says in, in Spain, it is blah blah blah, kilometers long, it goes from. Okay. Now, what, what I want you to do in just three, four, five minutes, using your mobile phones, your computers, or simply making up the content. I don't care. I'm not going to check that. Okay? So can you write a little description on a single sheet of paper? I need a, a sheet of paper from each group. Okay? Uh, in four or five minutes, the single description of the river that, I, you know, number one, you're writing about river saying. And you now have a second page, okay? You haven't got any spare second page somewhere else? Is that a spare one?
100% consumers, because in a traditional class, the students simply consume input and activities. And we are moving 200% producers of input. And this is important. This is, for example, when people talk about learner-centered education. This is learner-centered education. You are making sense of this label. The teacher has control of the situation, of course, but the students have, you know, a very active role. They consume, but very important, they produce material. Okay? Of course, you can say, well, but in this input there are mistakes. Of course. But because it is kind of guided writing, you know, the number of mistakes is probably not uh, so high as if it, if it were free writing. Okay? But anyway, because you want to cons you want them to concentrate on the answers, of course you pay attention, you, you guide, you know, their attention to the to the chunks of language which are probably right and that you want them to concentrate on. Yes? But the important thing is that they can consume, but most important they can produce. If you think, if you stop to think for a while, you say, what has the teacher done? Very little. You have been doing four, five, six classes, and you have done very little. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to prepare, you have to think about it, write the worksheet, give the instructions, but, you know, most of the work is done by the students. Alright? So, So, one of the principles, yes? Students can be both input producers and consumers, or input consumers and producers. I don't care one way or the other, all right? Telling about the story 
of this spot, Rio Guadiato. Okay? Good. Sometimes the character is not uh, a boy or a girl, but in this case it's a donkey. A donkey that was used to carry the charcoal. You know the charcoal? Okay? From the mountains to the city, for the markets, to sell it. Okay, so this little donkey is, uh, is telling, you know, provides the reading passages for the students. <coughs> And this little donkey <coughs> asked students questions. Okay? So we are dealing with uh, what is different between charcoal and coal, what is used for industry, what is what was used for heating in the past and the yeah. What is a mineral, who comes from wood, which one comes from wood? Because you know, in the mountains, sometimes you have you know these buildings, historical buildings, or you know, uh, in the mountains around Cordoba, there is a lot of history. Okay, too, not only nature but history. Okay, so we stop at one point, and where there is a swimming pool on one side, a modern swimming pool, and on the other side there is uh, an old building, a few, you know, some hundred years old. So here is a question about the swimming pool as well. Yes? So Aswan is the, is the dam that was built in uh, Egypt in the, 19, in the 1960s, okay? Another question, for example, is about Spanish. What is the word lagar in Spanish? What does it mean? The lagar de la Cruz. It's a popular place, but what does it mean? Yes? Sometimes, where you stop, you have the opportunity to learn geography. You get at a viewpoint, okay, it says, well, now we are um, located north. Look, what can you see? I can see Sierra Nevada at the south. I can see the, the tower of the cathedral. I can see whatever. Now, that's geography, yes? Sometimes uh, it gives you even opportunities to learn about literature, Spanish literature. In one of the routes that we do, there is uh, the little chapel, the little church, where Gongora was writing Las Soledades. It was an opportunity to connect with the Spanish teacher. Okay? This is a point by Pablo García Baena. This is an example from the students' booklet, okay? In another place where we stop, they have to look for a different trees. Yes? The arbutus, locust tree, the huckberry, etc. Yes? At the back, at the back of the field trip booklet, there are a couple of pages to take notes. So they take notes about that information which is not in the reading passages and the teacher tells them, you know, <coughs> to tell them when we stop at the, the spots, okay? For example, so in February, in pine trees, there are worms. Había processionaria, you know processionaria? Okay, so there were a few pine trees with them, uh, with this little <laughs> cocoon, yes? And that's what they say, okay? We call it a culo, the name in Spanish. Okay, no problem, but they got the information, yes? The roots. Uh, last Sunday in January, yes, at the end of January, there is a, a, a hiking group that organizes the same group, okay? Uh, the Troy Piston. We stopped at a place where there was a tunnel for the old steam locomotive. So we talk about trains and we talk about pistons. So I connected with the Detroit Piston. So they took notes. So the piston, it gives a name to the basketball team. All right? So, and math. Are there any math teachers? One math teacher, two math teachers, three math teachers, good. And we can do math in nature too. Okay, for example, we walk along these routes 
and they have to calculate uh, you know, the mean of the stages and whether it is above the law of rate, etc. Right? More math. This is part of a Roman water tank. Una alberca, una piscina grande. Yes? So they have to calculate the volume and the number of liters <coughs> that could fill up the water tank. Yes? So you are, you, you are connecting your hiking trip with English and with other content. Imagine you don't have opportunity to go uh, into nature because you live far from the mountains or because, you know, for any reason. Okay, you can do the same activity in the city. Okay? This is very difficult for me. A system of uh, equations. <laughs> uh, my, my math colleague at the school had to, you know, had to explain to me how to do it. I didn't know. Okay? So you have to do system. A is time for the number of benches. Blah, blah, blah. And the key answer is that one. I hope it is right. Is it? Right. Another one. Okay, you have um, to calculate the highest prime they deserve. <coughs> yes, and when you get the answer, because the students are working, for example, in teams, you have to add the number to your team number. Yes? So the highest deserve in this case. is number 17 and then your team number is your team number 3 so your answer is 20 yes <coughs> oh this is very difficult this is trigonometry you have to calculate angles <coughs> and no way when the when the when the shade of the cypress is no way i show you the answer you don't ask me yes all right. <coughs> or you can oh, do the best thing at la dulce de la mona. But anyway, uh, they have to calculate what is the probability of being able to shop one of those wonderful pastries in the time when the shop is open. Blah blah blah. So probability. The answer is that you have uh, 0.2 percentage of probability to be able to buy um, the pastries of the of the, dunk, of the Okay? So, we are not going to the mountains now, but we are going outside, to the garden. Okay? Last, last paper, last hand up.
of a little paragraph to your students could read and an activity they could do related to that reading passage. Think about the city, the plants, the... Okay, I was checking yesterday that it could be done and I found up to eight different activities to do from the garden. Okay, <coughs> so we are going out, take a template with you, think about a little reading passage and an activity for that passage. Connect it to the subject, for example, <coughs> that you teach or that you feel comfortable with. Okay, and we are back in two minutes. Okay. Um, so again, um, we, we wouldn't have spend so much time because it was just to give you the idea of how to do it. Okay? But imagine, imagine this was um, one of the stops in your school trip in the city. Okay? So you want, you're walking around the city and you stop there. So very quickly, very quickly, who wants to share subject and idea to do? Yes? Okay. I, uh, For example, what is your subject? About environmental education. Yes. And what would you ask the students to do? Uh, the task? Yes. Okay. Look for the... I, I draw a part of the garden. Uh-huh. Very good. Very good. Good. More ideas, yes? Yes. The subject is business administration. Uh huh. So we are supposed to be a company to do review gardens, mortgage. So we have a budget, customer. We have a budget, and we have a list of products, like for days, days, plants, and the prices. So I ask them to make a project. Very good. Very good. More ideas? More ideas? Yes? Biology, uh, to describe the shape of the different leaves and to recognize the tree from the <coughs> And well, it would be, first of all, I can give them some drawing and they have to find the drawing. Then I can give them some description. In the description, they have to identify like the two work, like for example, a parallel vein, the veins of the leaf, or palmate veins, if the veins are like in a hand, or the margin, if it is dentate, if it is smooth, the shape, hard shape, or linear, elongated, or uh, whatever. And with this vocabulary, they have to try to correlate or to identify which test corresponds to each leaf, and with this, they get the name of the tree. So now they can identify. And then maybe I can give them more vocabulary, and with this they have to write descriptions for other trees that are in the garden. Uh, okay, very important. Um, what do we do on the spot in the same in the place we are we have a stop? It's not the end. Sometimes it's just the beginning for a follow up in class. Yeah. Okay, probably what we do in that right moment is very simple, like. Sticky or filling the gaps or choosing A, B, C, or D. But it's an opportunity to do something else um, back uh, in the classroom. Yes? Any other ideas to share? Any other ideas? Yes? Identify yeah, the two objects with five different basic forms. Uh -huh. Then name the, the, the solid form of those of these objects. Um, Measure the dimension of uh, these two objects. Calculate the areas <coughs> of the faces of one object. And the last one, calculate the volume of these two objects. Very good. Very good. Yes, very good. Excellent.
Very excellent. Next. The arts? Okay. So, uh, I will provide a very short text. Lana, Lana is a movement from the 60s and the 70s. Uh, basically, it takes advantage of everything they found. Uh, and the artists come uh, from kind of there, so it could be a world with stone, stones, with rocks, uh -huh. even rubbish, even with the shadows, with the, the outside of the shadows, uh, and they go with waves or whatever they can. Uh, so they can work with this text so, or even with a video, with an interactive video, or the passive, or the process of interactive mm -hmm. questions. And the task will be uh, create your own piece of land art, try to use geometry, take a picture of it and upload it onto the collaborative uh, digital world, the picture has created yeah. for this task, and add feedback to uh, the three uh, following classmates uh, you have in Good. I feel relieved. Okay, now I'm glad because um, it was in my mind and yesterday I checked that we could do the activity and I said, well, I have to look for different options and I came up yesterday with eight different activities. But to be honest, you have added a few more to that list. Okay, so you see how many different opportunities to learn gives you just one single resource, which is just this garden where we have stopped. Okay? So, we can say that that, you know, or probably our last principle today, yes, is the source of input, the source of materials can be just the wall outside the classroom walls. Okay? Which is close to the student, which motivates, which is different, which gives you a different approach to the subject, etc. Yes? <coughs> and, and just to round up the session, what we can do now, just to put the end, is to use this uh, principle that we have been working on throughout the session to make them you know, uh, to transform them in a document for evaluation, yes? And then we can make, for example, a checklist, a checklist, okay, to be your client, okay? To, you know, when we design, when we adapt, okay? To see whether what we are using, it's actually something that students can work with if it adapts to their necessity, if it works, if it, you know, um, fulfills, you know, the requirements for the three stages in learning, etc., etc. Okay? We are wording, we are wording the principles into statements and we transform those statements into a checklist. Okay? This is on the Moodle, so you can download this today, tomorrow, or next, next week, whenever you want. And I think time says it's time. Okay? Uh, thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Please, please. Questions? Now or later? Okay? Uh, many thanks for your attention, for your active participation. And uh, you're very, very good students. Thank you very much.